Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Max. This is another video continuing in the um, lamp video series. So in the last video, or in the last video, we talked, we went over how to install the basic applications that makes up a lamp or a lamp server. Um, and we went over the acronym standing for Linux, Apache, MySQL, or Maria database, and PHP, Perl, or Python. And that most people in the industry consider this a LAMP stack. And we went ahead and installed all of these applications. So in this video, what we're going to do, now that we've installed the basic applications for our LAMP stack, um, as mentioned in the previous video, we are also going to install WordPress. WordPress is a CMS, uh, CMS standing for Content Management System. It's a complete system that allows you to create um, uh, things such as Word or websites, uh, users that can log into that website, and it's a whole uh, system for doing that for lack of a better term so for in order for us to successfully install and use WordPress what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a database then after we create the database we're going to need to go ahead and install WordPress and connect the database the database to WordPress so that's what this video is going to entail. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to run an, um, a secure script for your database. This is going to get rid of all of your unwanted and unneeded databases. It's going to help us create a, a password for root. And it's going to secure your database. So. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do, and I got my notes here so that I don't have to type out everything. The first thing we want to do is we want to run this, uh, this, secure, strip, this secure script. And so I'm just going to copy and paste that and put it into the uh, terminal. And this is the first command that we want to run. Be advised that you do need to have sudo and or root writes to run this script. Okay, then it's going to ask us a bunch of questions. And this, these are the general default answers that we're going to do to it. So let's go ahead and press enter and go through it. So it's going to ask me for my password. And then after I do that, we press enter. Okay, and uh, here is the first question. Enter the current password for the root, for the root user. We don't have a password for it because we hadn't set it up yet. So you don't have to answer anything for this. So you just press the default key, which would be in this case, enter. And then it'll go to the next question. Okay. So for this one, it says switch to Unix underscore socket authentication. And as you can see here, it, ha it gives you two choices, choices, either yes or no. If you want to choose the default, that will be yes. If you want to say no, you can go ahead and type, you can go ahead and type in enter or in and then enter for no. Okay, we're going to go ahead and choose the default which is Y for yes, and we're going to just press enter. Like I say, if you want to choose the default, in this case, with the large Y, that's the default answer. So we're going to go ahead and press yes. Okay, and now on this next section, it's going to ask us, do we want to change our root password? The default is Y for yes, but just to make sure, you can go ahead and type in another Y, press enter, then it's going to ask you, to put in your new password. So we're going to press enter. 
and we're gonna put in our new password okay my password is gonna be super secure it's just gonna be password and then I'm gonna re-enter that all right then it goes on to the it tells us that um, we were successful in our passwords settings right so now it goes on to the next question it has to we want to remove any anonymous users the answer to that is going to be yes so I just press enter after that then it's going to say do you want to disallow root login remotely meaning do we want to uh, take away the rights for any root login remotely from another from another machine answer to that is going to be yes for security reasons then it's going to ask us do we want to remove any extra test databases and access to it answer to that is going to be yes I know like I said earlier I know if you just press enter it will choose to default which is yes but I always like to make sure and so I press I put in Y and then I press yes or press enter on my keyboard then it asks do you want to reload uh, privilege privilege that uh, privilege tables now the answer to that is going to be yes and now we're done so that's that's the uh, script the secure script that you use for when you want to install uh, MariaDB it's the same script if you wanted to install and use MySQL. It's the same thing. So we're done with that. Now the next thing we want to do, um, let's go ahead and clear the screen. And we do that by, on the keyboard, you can do a control L as in light. That will clear the screen. OK. Now, what we want to do is we just want to check our, our, that make sure that our password works for our root. And so you're going to need sudo writes. And what we're going to do is log in and look at our current database. So the way you do that is you run this command, sudo space mysql space minus u for user. Then you put in your user name, which for us is root, and then minus p for password. You don't have to put in the password then, but what you do after you do that is you press enter. Then it's going to ask you for the password. So you put in your root password. After you do that, you press enter. And as you can see, it has logged us into the uh, into the database. So what we want to do from here is let's go ahead and look and see what databases we have available. And so. In large caps, you want to go ahead and type in the keyword show data bases, and then you always end every um, command with a semicolon, and then you press enter. Oh, uh, it's databases. Okay, so then we press S. And then we press enter. And as we can see, these are our databases. We're currently in that database right there. All right, so we have successfully secured our database. We're good to go with that. So now let's go ahead and exit out of the database for now. All right, clear the screen. And we're good to go. So we've done that. Now the next thing we want to do is we do want to go ahead and create a database. I know we could have created it while we were already in there. I just wanted to show you that command real quick. So in order for us to create the database, we should go ahead and log back into it. That's the command. I just hit the up arrow, press enter. It's going to ask for the password. I'm putting in the password, press enter, we are in the database. Once again, I'm going to refer to my notes, and we are going to go ahead and create a database. So 
this right here is a um, my notes right here in order to create a database we're gonna need to do several things we're gonna need to create the database then we're gonna need to create a user that can log into that database and create and give that user a password this is going to be the user's password not the root password so to go ahead and create the database we just run this command right here I'm highlighting and I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that and put it into my terminal that's gonna create the database make sure you have the semicolon at the end and this is the command create space database and then space and the database name which for us is our DB you can name yours whatever you want and then don't forget the semicolon and then press enter on the keyboard if all was successful you will get this this output right here so that was successful let's move on to the next command we are going to create a user for that database and this is the command to create the user oh sorry I forgot one there we go alright let's put that in a terminal and we'll go over the the meaning okay so what we got here is this is us creating a user for to add to our database and the command is going to be create space user and then the username and then you're gonna when it says right here identified by I guess we ran out of room on here so this right here is going to be the user's password and then you press enter and that was successful as we can see all right now we need to do one other thing we need to connect our user to the database that we just created and the user's name was user one okay so then we're gonna do this one last command it's just one last command and this is gonna like I say like I just said this is gonna connect our user to the database that we just created and let's see if we can expand our terminal a little more so we can have everything on one line and then we go ahead and right click put it in and this is the command grant all privileges on this database to this user and as usual for all uh, database commands you want to end it with a semicolon press enter and we see that it was successful excellent so we're good to go and uh, what we can do is this is a command for uh, clearing the screen while you're in the database is system space clear and as always you want to semicolon okay and so the next thing that we need to do let's go ahead and look and see if that database was added so show databases semicolon and as we can see we've, we were successful in creating our database excellent good to go so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and log out of this because we're currently logged in as root and we want to log in as our created user and that will tell us if we have successfully combined our user to our database this database right here so let's go ahead and do that let's go ahead and uh, get out of this database and we do that by typing in the command exit then semicolon then we're out of the database we'll clear the screen and then this time for the regular user the regular user does not have root rights so we do not need to uh, use sudo command we can just type in s ql space minus u for user and then type in the username which I believe is user1 yeah user1 one. 
one space minus P. Press enter. It's going to ask us for the password. I am going to put in the created password that we created earlier for user one, which is this one right here. And obviously you want to make your user's password more secure than this. And then you press enter and we are in. Now we want to look at show databases to make sure that this user can see the database that it's connected to. And there you go. It can see its database. And one extra three, one extra thing. Um, no, that's good. That's good. So we're good to go there. And then we can go ahead and exit out. All right. So now we are done creating our database. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and install WordPress. Right. So I have a script, a bash script for installing uh, WordPress. You can use this script if you want. It's a very simple script, right? If you don't feel like you want to use the bash script, you don't. You can just go ahead and install the commands manually. Okay? We'll go over the commands themselves. So the first thing you want to do is you want to install WordPress, the latest version of WordPress. That's going to be this command right here. I'm not going to run the command, but I'm going to show you what it looks like from the uh, terminal. Okay, we used a wget command. And that's going to go on to the website, to the WordPress website right there, and install the latest command. Okay. Control C out of that. Once you run that command, you press enter, obviously, it's going to download uh, WordPress. All right? And then the next thing, let me go ahead and close this right here. Okay. And so the next thing, after you download it, it's going to download it as a compressed tar file or G tar gzip file. After you download it, you're going to go ahead and unpress, uncompress it. That's going to be this command. And you type that in. Right? You go ahead and type that in, and it's going to uncompress the WordPress, the WordPress, um, the WordPress application that you just downloaded. Right? And then you'll be done with that. And then the next command that you run, after you uncompress it, it's gonna it's gonna make it a, a regular folder. And then that folder is gonna say WordPress. Okay. After you do that, you will no longer need the co compressed folder. And so you run this command. And that will get rid of the compressed folder. Okay. And I do apologize. The one other thing I should have told you is before you do this, you want to go into the, um, the web server's main folder. Because that's where you're going to download and install WordPress. If you've installed the, the web server, which is Apache, from the repositories, it's going to be in this folder. You're going to cd to this, then var, then dub dub dub, and press enter. You're going to do a ls. This is the folder that you want to install WordPress into. I apologize. I should have said that in the beginning, but before you run these commands, you want to go ahead and be in this folder. Okay? And then that's where you're going to see the folder for WordPress. You're going to download it. You're going to see it in here. Then you're going to uncompress it. 
once you uncompress it you're going to see a folder that says WordPress then you can get rid of the uh, the compressed folder and then you're going to then from there you're going to change it from the folder name to your website name whatever website that you're building and you want to use for WordPress okay so you're going to change it to the folder name from WordPress to your website this right here hopefully this is not confusing this is a variable that I created to name for my um, WordPress ch changed folder name I changed it to my whatever my website was gonna be right I hope this is not being very confusing to you and so after you do that then you'll be done right so you do those few things you'll be done let me go ahead and show you how to do it with the script right so the first thing we need to do is we need to create the script on our server and to do that you're gonna need root rights and then use whatever text editor you want to use for me I'm gonna use nano uh, I believe on most uh, servers Linux servers I believe nano is installed by default if it is not you can just install it with the command sudo apt install and then you can use the minus y script uh, uh, flag or not and then you just type in nano but I believe we do have it installed by default to see you just type in where is nano press enter if you see this output or any output that means yes you have nano installed so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create that uh, install script and as I said you want to make sure path to working directory that you're in this var slash dub dub directory go ahead and create the script in there and we do that with the command sudo nano which is our text editor and then whatever the script name you can name it whatever you want I'm going to name mine as w install dot sh because this is going to be a bash script and then we're going to press enter and it brings us to this screen and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the script since part of it is on another page I'm going to have to put that page that the rest of that in in just a few moments and then I just come in here copy and I paste All right and then I go to the next line then I go back to my script and then I'm gonna t I'm going to copy and paste the rest of this All right copy and paste it go back to my terminal paste it in and that's my script I hope this is not too complicated for you you guys will not have to memorize any of this all of all applicable data will be in the uh, video description for you to download and use and copy for yourself right <clears throat> so to go over it real quick for those of us who have not ever written a bash script is very simple this first line right here is known as the shebang okay um, you want to write this this lets your your um, your system your Ubuntu uh, operating system know that this is a bash script that you want to run all right and then this line right here and this line right here these are what are known as comments comments are not ran by the by the system they are ignored they're like notes which they are so 
Those will be ignored. They're just notes telling us where to go to download our uh, WordPress. And then this right here, it's the only, it's the only veritable that you have. Uh, for those of you that don't know, a veritable is just a placeholder for a value that you wanna you wanna name. So our veritable name is site underscore folder in large caps, and the value of that veritable is we're gonna name our site um, m69y.net. Okay, and then we just go through these commands. These are gonna be mostly. Um, uh, for the most part they all are these are our terminal commands that you would normally run on the terminal so echo minus e means this is what you're gonna see when the script is run it's gonna say downloading the latest WordPress in five seconds and then it's gonna sleep for five seconds and then it's gonna go ahead and do what it said it's gonna download the latest version of WordPress sleep another five seconds this is another comment. That's just for me to tell me what what I should do next. And then, as I said, we're going to extract it in about five seconds. We went ahead and extracted it. Sleep for three seconds. And then write the command folder. Has been extracted. Stand by to remove zip. zip was removed then we typed in the zip was successfully removed wait another three seconds now we're going to rename the uh, the folder from WordPress to whatever website we website folder we want to name it to sleep another three seconds then we're gonna we're going to uh, rename it from WordPress to our website folder name. Then we're going to sleep another three seconds. And that's basically it. Basically, all you got to do is just read what it's saying right here. As I said, the, um, the comments are ignored. Those are just notes for humans to read, you and me. The system, the computer will not run them. The system, the computer will run anything that says echo minus E. It'll also run this a system uh, command to uh, look at the status of the of the Apache web server. This one I wrote I was supposed to try after it runs the status command to get out of that I was supposed to press Q, but the command that I put in to do it didn't work so I had to do it manually and then from there we go on and this is the end of the script this is the final the final uh, sentence and it just says the script is complete so if you want to run this script you can go ahead and like I said I'll put the script information in the um, in the description of this video you can go ahead and do that. After we install this script, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and save it in Nano, and that's gonna be on your keyboard. I normally choose Control S. Control S saves it, and then Control X will exit out of it. Okay, and then you can either you can run the script either one of two ways. Let's go ahead and look at it first. We do a ls minus l space and then the script name, right? As we can see, it is the owner. This is the owner, which is the root, and this is the group, which is root. Okay, it is not executable. You want to make this executable if you want to run it, right? But you can run it unexecutable without it being, or excuse me, you can run it without it being executable. And the way you do that would be you would do run the command sudo space and then you would type in bash space and then wp install and the script name. You could run it that way or 
you can go ahead and make it executable and then run it a different way. I'll show you how to do that now. First, we would need to go ahead and um, make it executable. And that would be with the command sudo space change mod space. And then we would go ahead and use the command u plus x space wp and then tab out the rest of the command or the rest of the script name the u plus x that just means that the only person that can run the script is the user everybody else can just read it and then you just press enter and then now you will see that the script has changed in color okay so here's what it looks like now you can see it changed from white to green that means that the script is now executable okay let's go ahead and clear the screen and then from here what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and install um, we're gonna go ahead and run the script which will install WordPress so to do that let's see there's the script name so we're gonna run sudo space dot forward slash and the dot forward slash means run the script from the current directory that it is already in and then we just type in WP in and then from here let's see if we can tab it out oh, it didn't tab out and then from here we run this command and it's going to go ahead and run and execute so I'm just gonna go ahead and press enter and just read the screen it's gonna be downloading WordPress in five seconds there's the download it's done and now it's in another five seconds it's gonna go ahead and extract it it's doing that now extracting it means uncompressing it okay now it's going to remove the extracted folder the extracted folder has been removed successfully now it's going to rename it to my website name it has done that successfully the folder has been renamed now in three seconds it's going to restart the web server the web server has been restarted now it's going to check on the status of the web server this is the only time you're going to have to put in the manual input I'm going to press Q to exit out of this and now it says that the script is now complete excellent so now if we go ahead and do an LS we can see that the folder which was named WordPress has been renamed now to the website name that I want it to be and it is completed now after that what we want to do we no longer need the script in our in our in our um, server so I normally just remove it sudo space WP or MV for no, RM for removing it this is going to delete it off of our server because we no longer need it right and then we do another LS for list the contents in this current directory and so now we have that um, WordPress document uh, that WordPress folder right there and we can go ahead and CD or change into that doc that folder so we run the command CD space my six nine and then we're gonna tab out the rest all right we are now in my folder and then would you just want to do a ls command to see the contents in this folder do ls and there you there you go <clears throat> this is wordpress uh information in here it has three of the normal uh folders which is wp admin wp content and wp include and then all of the other uh, files that normally comes with WordPress. So this video is going a little over time. It's at 34, 34 minutes. So I believe we're going to go ahead and stop here. 
and then wait for the next video that goes over what we need to do next um, for activating our WordPress site. Thank you very much. I appreciate you looking at this video. I hope it has brought value to all of you. And a little shameless plug-in, uh, I'd like to let everybody know that uh, I do currently offer free WordPress websites for a limited time on a limited basis. I also offer free website consulting. So I'll put the link to my contact information in the video. I'll put the link to all of other relevant information in the video description as well. So thank you guys for your time and your patience. Thank you for looking at this video, and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. Bye-bye.